Welcome to Douglas County. This is Commissioner Kelly Robinson of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and welcome to District Dialogue. Today's show is going to be pretty interesting. I've got a special guest here that you're going to be excited about. Allow me to introduce Miss Anaya Gibson. She is a graduate of the 2016 class of Douglas County High School, and she's in the IB program, or was. She is now a second year sophomore at the University of Georgia, and she is my intern for the summer of 2017. Anaya, welcome. Thank you for having me. And with her specialty being a major in journalism, she's gonna do an interview for me. So this is gonna be interesting. Um, as you guys know, I, I, I tend to try to change things up. Try not to make it a talking head always try to think about object lessons, things of that nature. So she has a series of questions for me that I'm not quite certain where they're going to go. Um, I think she has a framework. She spent what, probably about what, a couple of weeks? Right. Um, you're in a couple of weeks this month, what you're in about six weeks now? Right. Six weeks into uh, being her intern. This is probably her last week. By the time you see this, she'll be gone back to the University of Georgia in Athens and stuff, and so we wish her very well. But we wanted to make sure that when we have interns, it's not just sort of general exposure. Sometimes we have to go deep. And this was an assignment I thought was appropriate for a journalism major. So let's see how well she does. So Anaya Gibson, please take it away. Okay, well, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you that Please. are in line with what's going on in your district. So just give me a brief synopsis about your district. Like, what is the main focus of your district? You know, it, it, that's a good question. And so you, um, obviously, first day you came in. Right. Uh, <laughs> it was a pretty hot session as, as normal. It, you know, it, it, it's pretty vocal. Right. You, you have to recognize that Douglas County is a pretty active community as it relates to uh, voters. Right. We have one of the highest turnout rates for the past three presidential cycles. In other words, people are active. They show up. And so District 2 is unique in that if you think about the four character areas right. in Douglas County, you have the eastern border, which is mine. Uh, which is across the river from Fulton and Thornton Road, which is Cobb County. All right. All right. You've got um, the far west, which is um, District 4, uh, which um, obviously touches Carroll and Paulding County. Then you've got two commission districts that are in the middle. So if, if I'm, I'm more, if, if you want to say I'm more of a suburban urban, right. District 4 is more rural. Okay. Uh, we've got two other commission districts um, to the north is um, Commissioner Henry Mitchell. He is more city. 70% okay. of his footprint right. is city. And then obviously you've got District 3, which is um, Commissioner Molecare, which is um, up to the south. Right. It's to be our true suburban feel, right? right. To suburban, rural for the most part, right. you know, big land mass, et cetera. If you think about those four character areas, District 4 tends to have more of a flavor that's toward the east, right? We're already commercial. Right. We're already built out. Um, it's not much that we can do, unlike District 4, where 40% of the land mass there hasn't been harnessed yet, right? right? It's farmland, right. it's right. rural, it's cows, it's, it's a little bit different animal. So one of the things in, in doing so, the voices that I hear out of District 2 are gonna be different than the voices in the other three districts. Right. And it's their own character areas. And so my job in District 3 is to hear them say, Commissioner Robinson, well, we don't wanna be like Fulton in Cobb. We moved over here for that very reason to move right. away from that density. But, you know, we love this bedroom community, but can we, can we get some street lights? Right. Can, can, can we get some sidewalks? Right. Can, 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 can we get some of the elements that we think is more, um, more looking toward the urbanization versus the, the truly rural? And it's not an either or, Anaya. And this is one of the things you probably have picked up from me along the way. It's not either or. Both can coexist. Right. So with all these different perspectives and these different outlooks on your district, because it is so diverse in that aspect, how do you feel you best represent your district? Well, and, and again, I, I, I think to answer it the easy way, um, you know, I always, often think about this is sort of like my third term. And so I've, I've, this is my ninth year. Right. And I've, I've sort of gotten a handle on listening to the voices of the people. And so it's sort of like right. all of them, none of me. Right. right. So if you see anything that I advocate, it's not about something that I've got, I'm counting political points. Right. I'm, I've, I've got some type of side deal or, or some type of typical traditional p political view. I mean, I'll just keep it honest. One of the things I try to do is really just listen to the aggregate voice of the people. Right. And it's, it, it's this movie that some of you guys may know on um, Training Day, and this is a Denzel Washington movie, and it talks about this, this, this notion of this new rookie cop. And they were talking to him about sort of understanding 
you know, mm -hmm. sort of his, his area. Right. And he talks about smiles, smiles and cries. And so it's one of those for me, it, it's, it's important that I, I hear the voices of the people. And, and if you get the voices of the people, if you really listen that it's not about you, then you can really act on them. And so from that perspective, I'm an advocate. Right. So I just advocate, if you don't want a cemetery in your backyard, you don't want a crematory, I'm right. your guy. Um, I can't always stop it, but, but can mm -hmm. you influence it? Um, can you advocate something to get it? Sure you can. But for the most part, uh, the effective way of being an elected official is just simply represent your district. Right. That is an excellent point because it is important as a leader of your district to do and to understand what the people want and what their wants and needs are. And I believe as, as a person, as a citizen of Douglas County, I do believe that, you know, the quality of life in which I live um, is definitely important to me and it's important to those around me. So along those lines with the quality of life in terms of the people within District 2, what do you feel like what way have you tried to engage in that? Like what steps have you taken to enhance or to benefit the quality of lives with those in District 2? You know, in, in, in you bring up a good point. I just I right. want to touch back on it. It says that when it comes to citizens, it's not about being liked, right. which is for Facebook, right. or loved, in, in that nature. It's, it's really about respect, right? Do, do you hear their voices? Right. And so then, and, and not just hearing it, giving it sort of this symbolic, like you smile on their faces when they come to the town hall, can they actually hear what they spoke manifested in some action right. that you've taken, right? So when you talk about the quality of life in District 2, um, it, 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 what's important to them is that they, they, their, their mantra in District 2 is we want to experience our tax dollars on a daily basis. Right. right. So these are your, your, your fellow citizens. Right. Um, and so these are your contemporaries, your, your, you know, those people all up the food chain who says, we just want to experience our tax dollars. Now that may be different than a dis different district. Right. But for us, they want to experience taxes. And so in their minds, they want to see, well, while you're out there resurfacing Riverside Parkway. Right. Can we get some bike lanes? Right. Can you put some sidewalks? Can you take that seven mile strip? And can you put some street lights? Right. Right. So, so that may be different than the person that's out in a different part of the county who wants to keep it dark because they want to hear the crickets right they want to see the stars and there's nothing wrong with that but but in our district uh, they want to see a little bit different so so in essence when they pull out of their driveway they want to be able to experience their tax dollars with the roads right improve the quality of my roads and, and so what happens is that in our district the standard is no we want an enhanced we want bike lanes that's what they want so you advocate right um, you know, somebody else may come along and says, okay, that's what you're doing over there. The people over on Thornton Road says, okay, it's too much density, it's too much traffic. It takes me 40 minutes just to get across the bridge. Right. What are you doing to deal with this, this you know, they say traffic calming, con uh, traffic congestion. One of the things we're doing is we did that $10 million study as part of the SPAS, which is uh, right. how do we reinvent this area? How right. do we redirect this traffic where you, it's already a hand that's dealt. And that's my challenge. Remember, I don't, I'm not like some parts of the, the county that it still has to be mowed down. Right. Right. I'm taking something that really has to be redeveloped. It says, okay, now how do I play this when you got all this light industrial combining against this, this residential, and how do I make them coexist? Right. And so, um, you know, so transportation is important. Obviously, people are very interested in, in, in our district as it relates to parks. Right. Um, um, that, that's a quality of life element for my district, right? Some people that may own 10, 15, 20 acres, that is a park. Right. And they can go outside and ride and throw footballs and yes. all of that. But when we have the density of District 2, which is the most dense and tightly compacted district as it relates to geography, we've got a different animal. Right. And so one of the things that we're working on is, is completing some prior work, such as the, the mega park um, in Boundary Waters. Right. As you know, we've got some baseball fields out there. We've got some fo a new football field. Right. We've got soccer mm -hmm. field. We've got an equestrian um, bike trail, wow. not bike trails, we've got walking trails, wow. uh, we've got an aquatic center, and so what's next on the docket is a community center. Right. And so that'll round out that whole park. In other words, a family can go there, and it depends on who you are, if you want to do volleyball indoors, you want to swim, you want to play baseball, right. you want to do soccer, you want to get on a horse, um, you just want to throw a, a fishing rod in the back just for the heck of it. All of that is there for you. So our concept is a little bit different than maybe in a different district, but it's one of those, let's be holistic about our approach and make sure the needs are met. So between community centers, between transportation, and obviously the last thing for quality of life in District 2 is that 
We want to bring back our home values. Right. We think that housing is important. So Commissioner Robinson, what can you do to enable um, to be a cheerleader, to be an advocate to say that you can come do business here, be a, a, a builder that will come and, and provide a, a price point that our citizens can move up into? Right. Um, and as, it, as their families expand. So it's one of those where it, you know, that was a very good question. Quality of life is different for each person. It is. But for District 2, those elements I described are, are something that they've mentioned in times past and now they're seeing it. So That is such an awesome point that you also bring up because quality of life is different for different people. It's, it's a relative term because a quality of life for one person may be we need more parks. A quality of, of life for someone else is to have smoother roads. And so I love the fact that in your district you have people who just have different perspectives. But the thing about it is what I've realized is with all these different perspectives, they all have one goal of making sure that not only their family can benefit, but all families can benefit. And I feel like in a way when all of these family benefit from individually and it kind of spurses out to other families and all of them benefit from the same entity, it could really enhance overall the quality and this, the overall standard for District 2. So it increases standards, it increases the quality, and it just, just goes for a better an awesome, if you right. will, District 2. So, oh, good, good question. Yeah. Right. Oh. So um, my next question that kind of goes in line with finances, what do you think would be like your biggest project that you've done in District 2 thus far? You, you know, you, you, you bring up a good point. <laughs> um, when you talk about finances, and most people know that sort of, sort of my swim yes. lane. Um, and, and, and what I, I bring to the table, I, you know, I used to be a senior vice president. And so it, it, I, I bring just that. I'm not a tree hugger. There's nothing wrong with those. I, I just... We, we contribute our talents, our time, our talents to the, to the community. And so as a public service, I, I tend to sort of, that's the one area that I don't want to miss. Right. That's the one area that like, I, I can speak out of turn as it relates to journalism and how to do a studio. That's out of my swim lane. I rely on my other colleagues to deal with that. But when it comes to the finances, that's what the public expects me to bring the most credibility to the table. Right. All right. So, so that being said, when you think about the, the major projects, I mean, uh, for the, you got to remember, let me back you up for a minute, give you context. And I don't know where you were in 2008, <laughs> but in 2008, you know, this was a place that we were in a great recession. Right. So for the past, you know, eight years or so, there was not much money to work with, right? right. Um, the, 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 everybody's values were down. So that means that, that the county government was, was thin as well, right? It was not much to, to work with. Though our population had grown, the ability to be able to provide against that, because the population just didn't leave. They just changed places where they right. had residents. They, they, they just moved around, but they didn't just necessarily leave. The interesting thing is Douglas County is one of the cheaper places to leave, mm -hmm. I mean, to live. So in essence, I mean, a lot of people still, our, our population didn't move, it, it held. Right. So it relates to projects like what's important. So right now for eight years, we did nothing. We built a jail, right? I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm not gonna politicize the moment. This says that, but our biggest project in the history of Douglas County was a $120 million jail. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, though that was um, a, a somewhat economic development initiative, uh, they, they, they provided a certain amount of jobs for a period of time. The premise behind it was that it was supposed to prevent crime. Right. Well, think about this, Anaya. Preventing crime is before you go to jail. The jail is after the fact. Right. It doesn't prevent crime. So with that being said, it's like, OK, what well, that didn't really accomplish. So we took $120 million. We made 800 people comfortable. Right. Think about it. So now you're asking me now, eight years later, it's like, okay, so what's important to us now? Right. Uh, what about the other 139,000 people that are in this county? What about them? That's where I'm at. So now I'm, I'm giving the context for eight years. We really, we, 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 we sort of, we did what we necessarily needed to do, per se, by building the, that building. We probably overbuilt it. Right. We probably could have did half of that. Right. Seeing that the, the capacity could be three times what's right. currently in there, so it was like, ah, we probably overbuilt. It doesn't matter, but now how do I recover from that? So that's why you're seeing me push more for, okay, we took care of them, now what about everybody else who's actually paying into the system? Right. That being said, if I, if I looked at, you know, District 2, what's really, really important? You know, I mentioned earlier the $10 million um, um, in economic development uh, investment into the Thornton Road corridor, which is important for both corporate and the residents that are there. Um, I, 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 that is invest, that's an important investment for our future, you know, dealing with that traffic. Um, I'm going to actually have to say that th that community center is something that, that, right. that symbolizes 
our future, our youth, right? right? We, we, we do a lot for, a lot of our tax dollars already go to our youth, but, but at the same point, um, it, there's something about, if you think about this park, the one thing that we're lacking is an indoor facility. Right. Everybody doesn't play baseball. Everybody doesn't play football. Right. Everybody doesn't swim. But there are uh, internal things within a building that we don't have. So we have 19 parks, and we only have one indoor facility in this entire county. It's 30 years old. Right. Right. So from, from, so from a priority and what's important is that that begins the, the push to sort of get other facilities, other assets that are in here that are important to that population of people, which is our youth. Yes, the seniors are important. Um, yes, and we've, we've sort of addressed that. But in my district, that community center begins to speak to where, that I have a younger population in comparison to some of the other districts, right? right. It's the younger families. So I've got a different priority than somebody else um, as it relates to that. So um, going back to what you said about um, how not everybody plays baseball, not right. everybody plays basketball, right. you know, there are indoor sports like, for example, um, me and the other interns who went to the Woody Fight Center and they were playing pickleball and it looked like so much fun, like the senior citizens were having an excellent time. I wanted to join. I was like, yeah. I've never heard of pickleball. And then you right. also have racquetball, you have squash and right. all these different things that you can actually like bring forth to the county that people probably don't normally play so that could also open up more different cultural um, cultural openings in terms of these different sports that are played around the world and not so much as favorited in the United States so right. that's also awesome but um, I do admire the fact that you not as a leader you hear what the people are saying you internalize it but at the same time you're like you you feel like you do what's best for the county for everyone as well and it's like you kind of bring forth their ideas, what they need, and then you try to formulate a way as, okay, so how can we all benefit so you do what's best for the county? So just like the name of this show is called District Dialogue, in a way it is a dialogue between you and the people and just trying to formulate some kind of way that we can all benefit and enhance the quality of life. So my last question to wrap it all up with is, you said before it's your third term. Yep. If this were to be your last term, what legacy do you feel like you want to leave in the minds and hearts of people in District 2? All right, so b before I get to that, <laughs> I, I'm going to close this out right. I, okay. I, I think I, I, I want to recognize, though, that I talked about the, the four different character areas and what's priorities. Right. Uh, there, there is this notion about taxation, you know, and representation. Right. And so there are what's called common public services that are across the board. Right. Roads, um, uh, public works, you name it, uh, public safety, which they universally all benefit from. But then every now and then there are these things that, that pop up where certain areas have a certain need based on their area. Right. right? Like a park. Uh, one area may not want parks at all. Their priority may be a totally different than this one. Right. All right, so that means that now some appropriations have happened in such a way that, well, this district got to spend a little bit more than that one, mm -hmm. right? So now you've got this from a, a now, now I'm going to put on my countywide hat that says I, I, I recognize that. I, I recognize that not, that, that not everybody gets um, uh, appropriations the same on, at, at a certain moment. In other words, if I only got one dollar, only one of y'all are going to get a bicycle today, mm. right? Like, keep it as simple, right? right? But we take turns, right? And so there's, a, there's, 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 there's something about prioritization. There's something about there's got to be a, a, a a, 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 a balance between how you use tax dollars. It is something that the public knows I'm not insensitive to. Right. In other words, we, we take turns. It's like, okay, I don't, and you know, my, my district was the last one to get a park. Right. Um, you know, Boundary Waters originally began in District 3. And then you got Dogwood, you know, Dog River, which is four. And then you got Lithia Springs, which is one. Right. We were the next one to get a real park based on the normal pecking order of going around. I said, you know what, all we need is a community center because we got this mega park. Right. So there's a balance you have to take turns. Unlike transportation, which is evenly divided by road miles, we do a pretty good job of dividing tax dollars by that. But some things you can't divide up a senior center based on, you know, it's not an even distribution. Right. But it's something I didn't want to lose that says that I am mindful of the fact that it, sometimes it, it, it may appear that way. But if you've got the right leadership, they'll make sure that everybody's needs are met in time. Right. Um, all right. So now let's get back to your question about, you know, if this was my last, right. you know, la la last rodeo. And, it, it, you know, it's one of those where, you know, being in office 12 years at you know, Anaya, it's one of those where, you know, I want to leave like I came in. Right. You know, be, be zealous about the people's agenda. The minute I began to make decisions to stay in office and I began to stage things and, and, and try to do things that sort of makes me look popular, 
or do things that um, where I'm trying to buy votes or trying to count votes. That's, you'll get in trouble that way. It, it's not sustainable, and I, I think it's disingenuous. I think one of the things in my district that they look at is really about you got to be authentic, right? And, right? and some things I say or some things that I vote on, either I'm going to have a, somebody's going to be in favor of what I said or they're going to dislike. Right. right? It's going to be like for every yes, there are going to be people who wanted a no, and for every no, somebody wants to be a yes. Just be, just be true to who you are and right. what you're advocating for, and, and, and you, this is a lesson that you can take in your life. Just, just, just know who you are. Vote your conscience. Be decisive, though. Don't second guess, and don't let the external pressure push you. So that being said, well, what, so what would I want to leave with them? One of the things I'm, I'm most proud of right now is this, this, this concept called mental health. Right. Right. Um, mental health is something that we know that has been traditionally taboo uh, in American society. Right. I can't speak to other cultures as, right. as you probably will. Be. I'm going to ask you one year from now. Now tell me about other cultures and mental health. Right. But here in America, it is always taboo. It's easy to talk about how I have a defect like my eyes or my arm is broke or something's happened. You can talk about your physical. But when you start having to share your mind, that's a different animal. Right. And so we, we, didn't, we, we, we suppressed it. Well, we know that, that if we address that, if we dress it on the front end, if we're preventative, then we don't have to intervene later in the jail. Right. Um, and we can save money that way. So one of the things I've been pushing on is a whole push to sort of deal with mental health. More of an education, more an awareness. I want this to really take off in Douglas County whereby people know that they can get help. Right. Here are the services. And there's a lot of services that are already being provided here. For awesome. those who don't know, we'll make sure we put it on the screen, which is our core a cooperative here out of University of Georgia right. Extension that provides us with services that, that sort of coalesces everything that you can get regarding support, whether it's dealing with ADA, ADHD, ADHD. Uh, schizophrenia, right. you name it, the top 10 that, that NAMI, which is the National Association of Mental Illness, is concerned, um, that you can get help. You know, suicide amongst teenagers is one of the fastest growing areas. It's right. not drugs, it's not opiates, it's teen suicide. How do we deal with that? How do we address that? And right. so my job is to sit there and try to create an atmosphere. Now, can government fund that by itself? Absolutely not. But can I create an atmosphere? Can I create an atmosphere of education? Absolutely can. Can I get behind those judges and give them the mechanisms and the, the, the dollars that they need to create housing um, components and, and, and um, literacy programs that right. help sort of support that? Absolutely I can. So I have a role to play right. as it relates to sort of mental health and be a champion for it. Um, Judge Bo McLean is someone who's been an advocate as it relates to a mental health court. We've got Judge Pecky Walker, who I'm looking forward to working with um, as it relates to children's mental health. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, State Representative Kimberly Alexander is also someone who has spearheaded this at the state level. And so I'm working at all levels of government to try to you know, drive home this notion that it's okay to say there's something wrong with, let, let me go get some help. Right. And so if I, if I left the community saying that mental health is, is something that we can address and that will be wholer, like it's not about just alone infrastructure, which is important. It's not just about transportation, which is important. It's not just about housing, which is important. It's about your health. And so if I can leave this county knowing that I got y'all focused, laid a, a good foundation for us to know that we le I left you healthier, then I think I'm in a good place to sort of smile and, and pick up the local newspaper and look at who's in office next right. and, and, and talk about the things that knowing that I left mental health as an important asset for the county. Yes, you're so correct about mental health. Like it has become such a prominent issue in today's time and people haven't really like grasped the concept that like I had said before in another segment, that your mind is your body's compass. Whatever your mind wants to do, your body is going to follow. Your body doesn't have a mind for itself. This is the control center. And so when somebody does have does need help and it's like, you know, I'm having a bad day, you have to communicate. You have to try to give them the help that they need. It doesn't have to be anything as, oh, I'm going to go take you somewhere to get help. Like, just talk to them. Like, so it, sometimes it just takes a conversation to have a brain dump so that way they can go on with their lives. So I do appreciate appreciate the fact that you're going in with the people in mind and so over the years you're building up in terms of parks in terms of infrastructure in terms of buildings and then you're leaving it to bring it all the way back home which is in your mindset that you know mental health is significant and I feel like the people of District 2 can definitely benefit from that and the fact that you're putting it out there that we need to be more mindful of those around us in terms of not so much the physical matters but in terms of the internal matters um, you're leaving us on a good foot so thank you so much for very this interview good. very thank good you. This, this, this was fun I hope was. this was helpful um, you can take this back 
um, to your professors and, and right. you know, that you got exposed to a real world situation. I mean, you had to apply what you were observing. Um, obviously, what I'm sharing with her, she sort of witnessed behind the scenes. <laughs> She'd seen me in my office just sort of like, you know, get up on my whiteboard. But, but hopefully this was a great experience um, interning with Douglas County. Yes. You have been an absolute pleasure and you've been, it made me very proud to be my intern. Thank you. So thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, Anaya Gibson, um, Douglas County's finest. Um, I'll be right back District 2 to close this out. Thank you. Douglas County, Kelly Robinson, District 2 Commissioner, welcome back. Again, this, is our, uh, this will be our fall um, district dialogue that should air here soon. And so again, I'm excited about where we are in Douglas County. You know, as a, as a new leader here, I think we're going in the right direction. Obviously, we're in the transitional mode as it relates to the county. Um, there's some newness in the air. Absolutely, with any newness, there's going to be change. And with that change comes growth opportunities, but yet, Rest assured, Douglas County, we're going to maintain our heritage. We're going to maintain those things that are proper and those things that can be extended, we shall do as well. It's not just sort of regressing and it's not necessarily progressing at full throttle. It's somewhere in the middle. But change is inevitable and I'm excited um, and delighted and honored to be here, to be part of the leadership that's going to take us forward. Mark my word, we're going to make proper decisions. Uh, we're going to be calculated in how we do so. Um, obviously, there is vision, but at the same point, there always needs to be provision. Uh, rest assured, as it relates to the financial aspects of this county, we're not going to overextend ourselves. We're going to take our time. We're going to be thoughtful about how we do things. We're asking for your support. Obviously, we're very thankful and honored that you gave us a chance to sort of have a penny sploss that we can take forward. And we need to deliver on that. You know, first things first. We recognize that the millage rate, by the time this that you see this, the millage rate conversation for 2017 will already be probably had by then. But again, we've got to go into serious conversations with new thoughts, new leadership, and new expectations. So with that being said, I'm not going to belabor this moment. I just want to say thank you for having me here one more term. Ladies and gentlemen, I give back your evening, your morning, or your afternoon. Have a good night. From District 2, Kelly Robinson.